Hello everyone, you're watching PC Helper and welcome to another video in the Python 3.9 tutorial series. If by the end of this video you feel like you have learned something today, then please leave a like and also don't forget to subscribe to PC Helper for regular content. So in this video we'll be talking about classes and objects in Python, which means we are finally talking about object oriented programming in Python, which is a very important part of this language. So let's get started without any further ado. So what is a class? The simplest definition of a class would be that it is an easier way of grouping similar variables and similar functions together. So let's say we have a website, it has a login page, it has a sign up page, it has a home page. So what is what's better to do here is instead of making a, a lot of functions in a big program, what we can do is we can make different classes for let's say we have a class for the login page and all the variables and functions related to the login page will be in that class. Now we have another class for the home page and all the functions and all the variables related to the home page would be in that class. So it is an easier way of organizing similar variables and similar functions together. And to access those variables and functions defined inside a class, we need objects. So these objects are called instance of a class. So these are small copies of the classes which are used to access different variables and functions inside that class. So to create a class, we just have to write the keyword class and we simply have to name our class. So let's say we have a class of different mobiles and we have to give a colon and a class is created. And as you can see, I started the name of my class with a capital letter. It is just considered a healthy pro practice in programming. So even if I'll start the name of my class with small m, it will work fine, but it is just considered to be a healthy programming practice. So just try to keep the name of a class starting with a capital letter. And now let's just make different functions for different kinds of mobiles available. So first of all, one thing to remember here is that a function inside a class is called a method. So it's working is same, but a function present inside a class is just called a method. So I'll name the first method flagship and as soon as I will write this bracket, you can see that automatically self was printed as an argument. So to get a better understanding of this self keyword, wait till the execution of this program because it will give you better understanding of this self keyword. But for now, just remember that is that it is used for the object. So let's say we have an object that uses this class mobile. So this argument self is reserved for that object. So we'll understand it in a better way as soon as we will execute this program. But for now, this flagship, this method name flagship will just simply print the specification of flagship mobiles. So flagship mobiles have really high end specs. So I can simply just paste it. I've copied it from somewhere. So as you can see, the it will print 128 GB RAM, 256 GB storage and 48 megapixel camera as soon as we will access this method called flagship. And now let's just name another method. Let's say mid range. And again, you can see that this self was automatically created. And now I will print it, print the same text, but instead of 12 GB, let's keep it 6 GB. Instead of 256 GB, let's keep it 128 GB. And instead of 48 megapixel, let's keep it 24 megapixel camera. And now let's come to a third method. Let's say a budget. So this is a budget mobile. And we have this self keyword again. And now we will print Let's say we'll print the same thing again and make changes. So let's say now we have just 4 GB of RAM and instead of 256 GB storage, we have, let's say 64 GB of storage and instead of 48 megapixel of camera, we have 12 megapixel camera. And now we just have to call these methods to get the desired output. So let's say we, I have to call budget here. And now when I will execute this program, you can see I got an error that name budget is not defined but we have already defined in this function called budget. So the thing is to access anything inside a class, we have to make an object of that class first of all, and then use that object to access anything inside that class. And creating and naming an object is as simple as naming a variable. So you can just give it any name. So let's say mobile one is my object. And to make it an object of our of class mobiles, we simply have to write equals to mobiles and a bracket. So now this mobile one, is an object of the class mobiles. And now we can simply access anything inside a class using this object called mobile one. So now to access, let's say I want to access mid range, this function called mid range to access it. First of all, I want, I have to write the name of our class. Then I have to write a dot 
and then I have to write the name of, of the method that I want to access. So I want to access mid range. So I've entered it its name. And now finally inside these bracket, I have to write the name of our object. So the name of our object is mobile one. So I will simply write mobile one. And now you will understand the significance of this self. So now as we know that we need an object to access a class, an object is mandatory. So this self keyword is reserved for that object. So now as soon as we have written mobile one here, so now this self is equals to mobile one, I will print anything for mobile one as an object. So now let's say we have another object called mobile two. First of all, let's just run this program. So when I've executed this program, everything inside that mid range function was printed. And now let's say I have another function called mobile two is equals to mobiles. So I've made another object and to access it, I will write mobiles and then write dot. And let's say I again want to print mid range and here instead of mobile one, I will write mobile two. And now when I will execute this, you can see that I have got two outputs here. One is for mobile one and one is for mobile two. So for the first time when this program will run, this cell will be equal to mobile one. For the second time it will run, this cell will be equal to mobile two. So the significance of, of the self is that we need an object to access anything inside a class. So this self is reserved for that object. But there's another shorter way of doing the same thing that we did now. And most of the programmers prefer that shorter way. So instead of first of all, giving the name of a class, then the name of our method, and then the name of our object, we can simply first of all, write the name of our object. As soon as our Python will read mobile two, it will understand that this mobile two is an object of mobiles. So it will go inside this class mobiles. So we don't have to write the name of our class. We can simply write the name of our object. And after this mobiles two, mobile two, we can simply write the method that we want to access. So let's say I want to access flagship. And now when I will execute this program, 12 GB RAM, 256 GB storage and 48 megapixel camera was printed, which are the specifications that we have assigned to a flagship phone. So most of the programmers use this second way only. And the only reason why I told you about this first way, this in which we first have to add the name of our class, then the method and then our object is because it was, I think that it is a better way of understanding this self keyword because because of this way, you can understand why this self keyword is here because we have to pass the name of our object as an argument and the self argument is equal to our object now. So the only reason why I showed you the first way was because I wanted you to understand about self and now we can simply change this line from this to simply writing mobile one dot mid range and change this line to mobiles mobile two dot mid range and that's it. It will also give us the same output. So now I will execute this program and as you can see our output is same. So we use this shorter way to use objects inside a class. The only way, the only reason why I made you understand about the first way was to give you a better understanding of this self keyword. So that's it for this video. In the next video, I will giving I will be giving you another example for classes and objects, and it will give you a better understanding of everything here. It will give you a better understanding of classes. It will give you a better understanding of objects and this, especially this self keyword, because we'll be changing the values inside a variable in our next video. So I hope you like this video. If you have any doubt, you can write in the comment section and I'll see you guys in the next one.